This is Eric from Pack Hacker, and today we're going to be taking a look at the North Face Basin 18, which I've been testing for the past two weeks. Let's dive in. So kicking things off with the exterior here, I'm going to turn it just to the side so we can get a nicer view there. Uh, we've got a 210D recycled nylon ripstop. I'll bring that a little closer so you can see the texture on that. You can see the little ripstop uh, pattern there. Um, very, very nice looking fabric. I'm, obviously the colorway is very um, vibrant, bright, and exciting. Uh, this, I really do like this blue colorway, and I think it goes well with the ripstop. I think that the pattern on the ripstop here really kind of accentuates those colors. I don't know how it does that, but it, it really does look nice. I think it's a really good pairing. And then we have the white North Face logo here, which I think really pops. And then you've got the Basin 18 there on the side. So overall, the look of this thing is very nice and very clean. Uh, we've got a 600D recycled polyester boot. So you can see there is a bit of a different texture there. And this material also comes up around the sides as well. So you can see a bit of a difference there between the ripstop and the polyester. But I think that's a, a nice choice as well. A little bit higher deaner of a fabric where it counts on the sides and on the bottom. So even if you're setting this bag on its side or on the bottom there, you kind of have that little bit of extra protection. So it does have a DWR finish but it is a non-PFC finish. So that means it does not have perfluorocarbons, which are bad for the environment and uh, just good to see a company like North Face staying away from a PFC finish because that's kind of a big thing in the industry right now trying to cut down on the production of PFCs. So that is a good shout from us. So in, in addition to the DWR coating, we also have this little rain fly here, which just pulls out. Here we go. As you can see, it has the North Face logo and it's a little bit darker of a color. I think these two blues kind of go together pretty nice. Gonna give you the right side up look there. Whenever you pull this out though, it is a bit wrinkly and the noise, I'm not sure whether you heard that when I pulled it out, but it's, it's very wind panty, 1990s wind panty. But to put this on, it's got elastic that runs through the top and you kind of just run, pull the elastic up over the top here. And then it has these little hooks here, and these little hooks attach to these little black loops. There's one on this side by the water bottle pocket, and then there is another on the other side by the other water bottle pocket. So now you can see it is secure. I, I was curious at first to see how well this stayed on without a, a secure, something to secure it on the top, but at no point did I have this pop off, which I think is a good sign. It was a little tricky to get on sometimes if you are utilizing these water bottle pockets, especially with like a bigger water bottle because obviously you can see it goes over the water bottle pockets here a little bit. So if you had a water bottle in here, your water bottle would be under here. And I'll go over the water bottle pockets in just a little bit, but I thought that was important to note. And it's also important to note that as you can see, there is a portion of the bag here that is not covered by the rain fly. So actually last night on my way home from work, uh, cycling home from work, it was raining pretty hard. And I noticed when I got home that all of this part of the bag was obviously completely dry, but down here was pretty wet. And I think that DWR coating did you know, save the stuff inside because when I pulled everything out, it was dry. But my ride home is, I think, between 25 and 30 minutes, depending on how, how quick I ride. So if it would have been longer, I would have worried a bit more about um, water getting through this material because it is a, a higher denier material but at the end of the day without the rain fly covering it water will get in there eventually but we'll pull this off here real quick talk a little bit more about the fabric before diving into the external components so this just shoves back in here nice and easy there is a little uh, button here and you just since that button it had, at no point came out, which I think is a good thing. Uh, this material was really easy to clean. So sometimes I wouldn't use the rain fly if it wasn't raining, but in the spring, so water would spray up off the back of my bike and would get this kind of dirty. And the ripstop was really easy to clean. Like I showed you earlier, the 
The ripstop has a nice texture to it, but very easy to clean. This polyester was a little bit harder to clean, but with a little bit of scrubbing, it cleaned up no problem. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got these two water bottle pockets, and these are real nice water bottle pockets. I've got my 32 ounce Nalgene I use pretty much every day here, and it fits in there, no problem. You've even got a little bit of room to spare, but very tight, no worry about this coming out of the pocket. I also would often put my Bluetooth speaker in one of these pockets, and that's a, quite a bit smaller, and that would not come out either, but very happy with how those perform. On this side here, we've got an attachment area for trekking poles or for whatever else you could really stow on there. So this here is where you'd put the top and you kind of cinch that down and then the bottom of it goes through here. So this is like, there'd be like an umbrella almost here and you cinch that down around it so it can't come down and then this kind of holds it against your pack and not so it's not flailing around or anything like that. But we'll move on to the back here. And we've got um, something from North Face called their Next Vent back panel and also on the shoulder straps here. So as you can see, we also have load lifters on the top, which makes even obviously at 18 liters, you're not gonna stuff this full, um, like super, super heavy. You can stuff it full obviously, but that does help with the weight. But we have this really nice back panel where it's, it's, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's got this padding here in these four different ways. And then it's got this nice vent through here. So I've tested a lot of backpacks working here at Pack Hacker, and this was probably one of my favorites to date for riding my bike to and from work because it really does, those air channels really do work. And this padding has little channels too. I'm not sure well you can see that. It's almost like waves. So you've got little tiny like crests of waves. So the air is able to move through there and the padding itself is pretty airy as well. So overall just very happy with how this back panel performed. And I think that also having, so right here, you can see my, me sticking my arm down here. This is for a water bladder can fit inside of there. And I think that also assists with the airiness of this back panel. So overall, very happy with this. My back was not getting sweaty hardly at all, even on 60 some, I think we even had a day in the, in the low 70s. So my back was really not getting terribly sweaty, but obviously at a certain point, you're always gonna get a little bit more warm or something's pushing on you, but very happy with how this performed. Moving on to the shoulder straps, these are pretty rigid and up towards the top, they're pretty wide as well. But happy with these two, they have ample padding and they have that same kind of crest, the wave crests here to keep the shoulder straps from getting too warm. The shoulder or the sternum strap here is on a rail, very easy to manipulate, but stays in place pretty well once you have it where you want it to be. And then we've got the buckle here with a whistle. Um, I've never really had to use the whistle, but it is nice to have if you're hiking or if you're on a bike and you really want someone to hear you. But all the buckles on this thing are ITW Nexus buckles, and we've got some hard plastic adjusters from them as well. They all work as they should and no issues with them at all, so nothing really to report other than that. But we'll talk about this um, water bladder area a little bit more. You've got this little clip here to... Um, hold the water bladder up so it doesn't kind of sag down in the bottom. So that's a nice little inclusion. So you would put your water bladder through there so it's kind of holding it up. And then depending on which side you want it to come down, you bring it down and around and it's got these little elastic things here to keep it from going up or just kind of keep it in place. So that is a nice inclusion and there is somewhere else on the inside of the bag to keep your water bladder if you prefer to keep it inside. So we'll get there in just a little bit. Oh, dropping things here. So another little pocket here, we have this little, little stash pocket here, which I often just kept a little bar in, whether it be Cliff Bar or just like a snack for if I'm riding my bike or if I'm on my way to work and I wanna just have something in there. It's nice to have that option. It's actually a, a fairly large pocket. As you can see there, I mean, the, it kind of shares space with that rain cover pocket, but my hand goes all the way down past my wrist. So it's a, it's a pretty amply sized pocket and you can see that there is a bit of depth there as well. So you could even you know, throw like maybe a small shirt, some socks or something in there as well. Um, but it should be noted that it does not close on the top. So if it does start to rain and you don't have the rain fly up, water's gonna trickle in there. But if you have the rain fly up, in theory that everything in here will for the most part stay pretty dry. Just above that, we have a little quick access pocket here, which is where I typically kept my wallet and my phone. And you see here, there is a little key clip there it's pretty hard to manipulate, so I didn't use that a ton, and I actually do keep my keys in my wallet, but 
it's nice to have that option if you like to have a dedicated place for your keys for your hotel or Airbnb right there where you know where they're at. Pretty, pretty small pocket here though. You can see my, my palm fits in there with my hands spread, but that is about it. So we'll close that up and we will move into the main compartment here. I should mention too that these are all YKK zippers. Uh, all the zippers on this thing are YKK zippers and they, they do as you would expect from a YKK zipper. So no complaints there. Right now I've just got some packing cubes stowed in here so you can kind of get an idea of how much space there is. At 18 liters this isn't a huge pack but it does have a pretty ample size main compartment. So we've got this large packing cube and then this small impact, smaller packing cube which both fit in here with no huge issue. So I'm just gonna drop these now. But in the main compartment, we're pretty basic as far as components in here. We've got this laptop sleeve in the back. So it says online that it fits a small laptop, but this is a 15 inch MacBook Pro, which fit without issue. And as you could see, there was a little bit of room on either side. So it's not like it was a super tight fit. And I didn't feel unsafe putting my laptop in there either. There isn't a ton of padding. You obviously have the padding from the back panel on this side. There isn't much padding on this side, just basically a little uh, liner material here. But as long as you realize that your laptop is there and pack your bag accordingly, you're not putting anything sharp touching it. I had no issue at all with uh, putting my laptop in here. But you can also use this as where you put your water bladder. There is a little pass through here. Maybe better to show you from this side. Little pass through here where the water bladder can come through. So it's kind of like a, a hybrid usage situation here. So if you're going on a trip and you want to bring your laptop, but you also want a bag that can be used, use a water bladder, you could leave home with your laptop here and your water bladder rolled up here. And then when you get to your location, you can kind of decide what you need for the day. So if you want to take your laptop somewhere, you can leave your laptop in here. If you don't need your laptop, leave it at the hotel Airbnb and put your water bladder in here. Or if for whatever reason you need both, you put your laptop here and your water bladder here. Or if you just want the water bladder, you go water bladder here or water bladder here, saving some space in the main compartment. So it's almost seems like a little bit overthought on both ends, but as someone who doesn't really use a water bladder much, I thought that it didn't get in my way, so it didn't bother me. So I just threw my laptop in here, and as I said, I think that this, um, the water bottle panel, water bottle packet next to the back panel really helped with the aeration of that back panel. So I had no issues with the kind of dual use, and maybe if you are someone who uses a water bladder a ton, you might have something else to say about that. I'd love to hear your insight on that. So if you do drop a comment below, but I'm kind of happy with the dual usage. So if you want to bring one, you can, which I think is awesome. But apart from that, there really isn't anything else going on in this main compartment. Another thing to note is that there is a, a little bit of space there at the bottom between the end of the, what we'll call the laptop and water bladder compartment. So when you have this backpack on with your laptop in it, there is a, it's only about an inch, but there is about an inch of space there. So your laptop's not sitting directly on the ground. But overall, ha really happy with how this performed. When I first got it, I was a little skeptical in using it for commuting to and from work just because of its size and you know, like having the water bladder and the, the space for the uh, trekking poles and stuff. But very happy with how it performed as you know, a daily driver and then also getting out for some short hikes. The features that are used for hiking really don't get in your way when you don't need to use them. And I think that's really awesome because a lot of times packs that try to do both, something gets in the way of something else, whether that be the hiking aspect or the outdoor aspect getting in the way of the daily use or the daily use getting in the way of the hiking aspect. And I really think that this bag does this well. There are a few, like, a few loose threads that seem to keep popping up. And I don't know if maybe we got a bad copy or whether my use has en enabled those threads to pop up. But like when I was pulling out the um, Rainfly here, you can see those loose threads there. Uh, Austin pointed out to me, I'm not sure I'll be able to find it now, but there, there was a loose thread up here near the top, like a white thread. And also on the bottom here, that's getting a little bit frayed. And just some, that same loose threads there, but just a little, like there's some there as well, some loose threads on the stitching. 
And like I said, I didn't notice them right away, and I tend to give the bag a pretty good inspection when I first get them, so I don't know if they popped up because of my usage, but either way, it's not a great look. Let me shove this back in here. It in no way affected my usage of this backpack, but, and I'm not one to, to fret over loose, thre loose threads, but it, like I said, it's not a great look and just not really what you expect from uh, a brand like North Face when, you're, when you are paying a little, bit, a little bit higher price sometimes for a backpack. But overall, very happy with this backpack and the loose threads didn't affect me personally, but if you're someone who does not like that sort of thing, I think that's important to note. But there you have it, the North Face Basin 18. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to some travel. We'll see you in the next one.